to begin the 11th form, Wudang Kata or form. So we've only got one to go after this. I'm gonna, it's, a, it's easy but difficult again. The movements aren't that difficult, except as it gets towards the end there, there's a couple of really difficult Qigong methods. Really low ones, which I find difficult to get at my age and having started it's at a relatively later age, I do it as best I can, but you just do them as best you can and you get great benefit from it anyway because of working upon these joints here. Um, as I say, there's, there's not much physical movement in it. <coughs> in fact, it's probably got less than all the others, but it probably takes longer than all the others because the Qigong methods are so lengthy and they also go into the four cardinal points and then one goes into the four corners and then you do it in the reverse direction as well. So that's why it takes so long. This form is called prenatal form because we do the prenatal breathing where you, you, you when you breathe in this bit's going in and this bit's going out and when you breathe out the reverse happens like this. You get a wave happening in your stomach. This is to take the outer chi they say and mix it with the inner chi. So in other words you're adding to your prenatal qi, that's why it's called prenatal. We do prenatal breathing for the first lot of qigong and then tortoise breathing for the second lot of qigong. Tortoise breathing is simply prenatal breathing except you hold the in-breath for five seconds or more and then breathe out. So when you do this reverse breathing, when you breathe in you see a qi flow happens in your body. It goes up and down, up and down. That's if the whole abdomen is going in and out at the same time. That's natural breathing or even reverse breathing. When you do re prenatal breathing, because when you breathe in, energy, the, the chi naturally rises. If the whole lot, if this and this comes out, both your prenatal and your external chi, that is which is above the diaphragm, everything below the diaphragm is prenatal, that which is above is postnatal everything, so here's one here and here's one here, it goes like this. So never the twain shall meet. But if you reverse the way your stomach goes in and out, it'll change the direction of the chi flow. In other words, the activation point it changes. So the activation point is here and here. When you breathe in, there's the diaphragm there, when you breathe in, the activation points go up like this, so never the two activation points will actually meet. So when you reverse the way your stomach goes, you change the direction of one of the activation points. So what happens now is, when you breathe in, this goes in and this will go out, so you get... So the diaphragm is considered to be the border between post and pre, and what happens is the two qi's tend to mix and then separate as you breathe out. And this qi, in, in very simple Chinese language, you take this qi and add a bit to this qi and that one pulls it back down to the Dantian. That's, that's, so that's very simplistically what we're trying to achieve. So when we do the tortoise breath we simply leave it there for a little bit longer for, for more to mix and then it goes out again. So that's why we do this prenatal and tortoise breathing. This is said to take you back to what we were before we were born. In other words, we were at, at a whole. Spiritual, physical and mental were all as one, of course, in the womb. It's just like that. When we're born, we're still that way for a little while and then we start, those three things start to separate into their separate parts of the bodies. Heart, physical, of course, and mental or mind. So the Shen lives in the heart of the spirit. The mind is in your brain, of course, and the physical is just yeah, what you do physically. So we tend to have separate, three separate things as we grow older. So what this form attempts to do is to bring those three things back, <coughs> never get it back to what it was before we were born, because that's totally unnatural, of course, but it gets it back to a much more balanced um, thing of having the three areas of your, bod or areas of your body reunited in some way. And this whole form is like life itself. It's like when you're in the womb, 
That's how the form starts. It starts out extremely still, like the last kata we did, the stillness kata. This is even stiller. In fact, there's no posture. You're just standing there to start with. And it's very, very still. And the Qigong methods even are very slow and deliberate, indicating when we're being born. Or just after the Qigong method, of course. The Qigong methods are like indicating like when we're prenatal. And then the following movements, the violent movements, when you start to move, that's like when you're starting to be born. And then the final <laughs> the final moves are like when we're purely physical human beings. And it goes like that through the whole form. So we have the three areas uh, indicated in this form. We have what we like in prenatal. We have the mind represented, or the Shen represented, the spirit, and we have the physical represented in extreme physical movements. So that's what this form's trying to do. It's trying to get you back to a more balanced sort of a person in that we're remixing or rejoining as much as we can, of course, being adults or human beings, the Shen, the physical, and the mind or the spirit, the spirit, mind and the, and the physical. We're trying to get it all back together as much as we can. Never get it back fully. So, um, we start this form just standing normally. You just simply stand with your feet at 90 degrees apart and your knees aren't even, they're just, they're not locked but they're not bent down as, in, as for a qigong. And remember that last Qigong that we did in number 10? We do that Qigong for the most part of this form, only it's much smaller. You can hardly, someone watching you wouldn't quite know what your hands are trying to achieve. So, we've got to get this prenatal breathing happening. So when you breathe in, everything below, the, down this area, gets dragged in and everything above it gets pushed out and when you breathe out the reverse happens this goes in and this area comes out so you see you have sort of a wave happening here So that's prenatal breathing. And tortoise breathing is simply when we breathe in, we do the prenatal breathing. You hold it. Four, five, and then, then you breathe out. So that takes a bit of getting used to. <clears throat> it's quite a powerful, powerful breathing method. But you mustn't allow tension to creep in. The tension will negate everything that you're trying to do. So let's just try it. You're standing like this, just with your feet, just naturally like that. Hands out in front of you like this. Now the most important part here is to try and get that sung, that, that absolutely sinking and absolute stillness. Your hands should be sort of like background noise like that just feel it down the back of your head going straight down your backbone down to the dantian area or coccyx area and just allow everything to fall down that analogy of the backbone being a chain and a tube that's exactly what we're trying to achieve all the vertebrae are just sinking and dropping on top of each other, sinking down, down your backbone. Your arms are just like branches on a tree. They're just literally hanging there. And you can, you can feel around this area in particular, you can feel this... It's, it's uh, I explain it like, like, like background, like, like white noise. It's like... Zzz.